Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, our little workshop today, 17 Ways to Undo Mistakes with Git. We've been doing this for quite some time, but this time is a very special time because I have a guest, um, a, a wonderful colleague from Buddy. And this is, as you know, undoubtedly, this is a special uh, webinar for you guys from, from Buddy, for the Buddy um, community. So welcome, uh, everybody. And I'll hand right over to my guest and host, to Raphael, to say a couple of introducing words about Buddy and himself. Hi, Tobias. Hi, everybody. So glad to be with you here today. So Tobias is from Git Tower. Uh, it's a great Git client. I'm from Buddy, uh, the CI CD platform. So uh, Git Tower is used to work with Git commit, push changes to the repository and so on. Buddy is working on files that have been committed to the repository. We built, test, and release your application. So uh, I think we can say Git is in the middle between our tools. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but the more important is that the Git is a version control we, in the, we and our teams are using on a daily basis. And we know how powerful it is and we love it. That's why we have decided to to do this webinar together. So thanks, Tobias, for 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 uh, joining us today and and for this webinar. So today we will be talking about how to undo things in Git. So Tobias will show us some tips and and tricks how to revert some mistakes uh, we committed to the repository. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. A couple of words about yourself. I, I'm sure everybody knows Buddy because it's uh, it's the community, but maybe not everybody is familiar with yourself, Rafael. So, so uh, I'm the CTO of Buddy, and uh, uh, once you uh, uh, send us a message, I try to read all messages or feedbacks from you and and analyze it, and and I'm behind the developer teams. Okay, very cool to have you on here. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rafael already said it. Um, I'm part of the team behind Tower. Tower is a Git desktop client. So the, the other end of the spectrum, uh, Buddy being in the cloud and, and Tower being on the desktop. We've been around for a little more than 10 years right now and have, I always say we have helped um, more than 100,000 people, developers uh, all over the world work more easily with the Git version control system, right? So take take out the headache of, of the work with Git. And the, the reason why I picked this topic here, undoing mistakes with Git uh, for this evening or here it's evening, um, is sometimes I feel like that little man here in the middle uh, surrounded <laughs> by lions in a lion cage, making a change in a complex software project. It, there's so many things to go wrong. You can make so many mistakes and and I think um, not everybody knows as a developer that this is the reason why we have Git. This is the reason why we have version control, right? So to be able to undo the mistakes uh, that we've made and that are unavoidable, right? They're inevitable in our daily work, but we have a safety net and that is Git. And I want to show you a couple of the um, undo tools um, that are in the toolbox. Um, and of course, the, the, the ways to undo your mistakes. The workshop is called 17 Ways to Undo Mistakes. We'll have a couple of cases uh, less today because Rafael is, is our guest and, and host. And we have a little conversation in, in, in some cases and, and um, a little back and forth. So we probably won't make it through all the 17. And just a, a little notice, we're getting more complex toward the end. So if you're a beginner in Git, be very alert on the first half and tune out on the second half. Or if you're more of a, a Git a pro, then the second half of the workshop will be more interesting. I'm sure this webinar is a very good part of knowledge for, for beginners. But if you are a senior developer, I think you will find something for you as well because you were, I'm sure you are not doing this every day. You are committing, you are pushing, you are cloning, fetching and so on. But uh, I'm sure you are not doing everything we have covered in this webinar. So uh, I think the uh, 
uh, most uh, important things will be at the end of this uh, webinar, but uh, stay with us and, and, and listen to this webinar. Yeah, thanks. Wonderful. So let's jump right in and, and start with something very simple to, to warm up and, and get the engines going, discarding all local changes in the file. So for the first couple of cases, we're looking at local changes, uncommitted changes, so things that haven't been committed to the repository yet. And let's see how we can work with that or how we can undo that. So just for people asking themselves, this will not be a tower webinar. We want to show everybody uh, how to use that on the command line. And sometimes you will, will see tower on the sides. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so everybody can, can follow along. Uh, having a tower license is not a, a, pre, uh, a prerequisite. All right, a, a very simple um, maybe web project with a couple of changes. And let's take a closer look at what we have in uh, imprint HTML. So git diff imprint HTML will show us the, the actual changes in there. And so I, you can see I manipulated the title tag here. And let's also say it wasn't my best work and I wanna get rid of that. I wanna get rid of the change and get back to the last committed state. So this is very common. We want to spike something. We make yeah. some changes in code. We we check it and it turns out that we shouldn't do do it it mm -hmm. in this way. We should uh, check another way. Mm -hmm. So we want to re revert every change and we want to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Only in in the in the bad days, right? Sometimes we have good <laughs> days, <laughs> but yeah. often, to be honest, uh, undoing is is a popular thing to do. So the thing you can do is. A couple of um, months or a few years ago, you probably would have used Git Checkout. Git Checkout is one uh, possibility to undo local changes, but I don't know, maybe two years ago, I'm not sure about that, a quite new command appeared on the, in the, in the Git um, command package, and this is Git Restore. And I prefer to use Git Restore nowadays because it's so focus on what it does, right? Git checkout, as you know, Raphael, Git checkout has a million uses. Yep. I'm old, <laughs> I'm still using Git checkout. <laughs> uh, I remember subversion, so, so I'm pretty old. Uh, but uh, could you tell us uh, if uh, Git restore works in a different way or both do the same? They do both the same, but with Git checkout, you, you always have the ambiguity of what it really does because it has so many functions so many yep. jobs right git checkout of course to switch branches most most importantly but you can also undo changes and restore individual files and, and, and things and restore you know only undoes changes so it is a better name for 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 this part of functionality exactly it's it's clearer i think it's it's more straightforward so if i do that and take another look at git status i can see well imprint html is not amongst the changed files anymore so we're good we undid the changes there and returned to the last committed state i think it's worth mentioning that it can be undone so if you are going to back to those changes you should consider to commit those changes to another temporary branch for example mm -hmm. just execute the command git checkout uh, dash b new branch name and and commit those changes to another branch to uh, in this way you will have ch chance to to back to those changes exactly very valuable information because as you say once it you do be, that yeah. it's, it's done yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right git restore for an easy start and let's let's get a little bit more interesting um and and, and granular also um, not everything that we did in most cases is bad, right? Sometimes only parts of a file are, are not what we want and we want to keep the rest of the changes. And that's also possible. So we don't have to throw away all of the changes in a file. We can be selective about that. And that's a, a wonderful uh, possibility in Git. We're jumping to number three. This is all live, so I have to do a little bit of typing. Mm. Maybe let's start looking at what we did to index HTML. All right, so we can see we have 
two at least two chunks of changes two area of changes we have a manipulation of a list up here and then down there we have another area of changes right i, I manipulated a um, a link and Raphael, which one should we keep? Which one should we throw away? First one, second one? So, so I <laughs> think the first one is uh, is in good shape. So, so <laughs> let's throw away the second. Okay, we'll, we'll keep the first one and throw away the second one. That's very good. Um, so the command is very similar to what we used uh, just a second ago. It's also git restore, but this time with the dash p flag. Dash p means we're going down to the patch level, right? We're not doing this to the whole file. We just want to uh, select the individual patches or chunks, as we say. And we want to do that with index HTML. And now get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, do you uh, know what those all <laughs> letters mean? <laughs> I was prepared for that answer, uh, for the question. No, uh, I don't. I, I know the first one is for no, and the second is for yes, but yeah. the rest of... <laughs> Yes, and that's the same same uh, knowledge that I have. I have no clue what the other ones do. I, I used to know, but I want to sleep at night, so I, I, I don't know all of them. Uh, but I remember we said we want to keep the first one, right? We, we want to keep yep. this. So discard this hunk from the work tree. No, we want to keep that. And for the second one, we said, well, let's throw that away. It's not genius work. So let's say, yes, we want to discard that. And let's take a look at Happened. We worked on index HTML. So the way is is Tower, the the desktop client we make, and voila, we kept the first one alive, but we threw away, we discarded the second one. And so you can also do this in a graphical user interface, right? You have these little buttons here and say discard chunk, and then this is gone. But you can also go further. Um, down to the level of individual lines. So if you have a quite a big chunk of changes and you don't want to throw away or stage for that matter, all of the changes, you can say, well, these two lines, they look suspicious. So let's discard those, but keep the rest intact. And this is not only possible for discarding things, but also for staging things. So I can, I can click that one and say, well, this line is one topic. So we'll, we'll, we want to make sure this makes it to the next commit. So I'll stage that. So this is part of the next commit, but the other line or the other chunks, not. And and this is a power of Git Tower. You don't have to remember all things. You can do it from the user interface. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes the question comes, how can I do that on a line level on the <laughs> command line? And I simply don't know. One of the one of the letters. One of the letters is for splitting the chunk further, and I don't. Yep, I, I have to confess, I have read uh, your blog post about it, and I know uh, that you can decide how Git split changes into chunks. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Could you show us how to do it? Yeah, sure. You can say, let's find a bigger chunk. I'm not sure if we have. Some. Well, maybe this is big enough. So if, if a chunk is too big or too small, mostly too big, I guess, you can say that. Um, at the moment, three lines, three clean lines between chunks are what separates one chunk from another. So if I would say, well, I want to have smaller chunks, right? They're too big at the moment. I can say, well, I want to have two lines between them. And then it's, a, it's considered a new chunk. So you can decide how big you want to have those chunks. This is also a exactly. configurable. Yeah. So, so, uh, to be clear, mm -hmm. uh, this is a Git configuration, so yeah. you are able to do it from the terminal as well. Yeah. So I think there is a Git config mm -hmm. with global argue mm -hmm. uh, to to set it set it, and, mm -hmm. and in this way you you will be able to decide how large is your chunk exactly. in Git. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you configure, you can configure almost anything in Git. So, but <laughs> you have to Google. I don't know that. Yeah. Hard. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go on. So this is Git restore with a dash P flag. Very, very interesting for yep. um, working with. I love the possibility to stage only some changes yeah. in a file, commit it and stage and commit the rest of changes. Mm -hmm. It's a great functionality of Git. Yeah. Not only decide which files 
I want to commit, I can uh, I can uh, decide what what part of changes I want to commit and and uh, keep rest uh, uncommitted. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. And I I used to think this this was a, a pro feature just for for very experienced programmers, but actually I think if you if you want to make sure that a commit only contains one topic right and that's that's the big rule in version control yep. you only put one topic into a commit i think that's that's invaluable that's it's really a great tip. Yeah. it's a great tip i'm sure uh, uh, everything you you have done in, in tower right now to stage only part of file uh, we can do from terminal but mm -hmm. i love the way you have done it from from a tower so yeah. let's jump to another undo case yeah yeah let's go <laughs> Number four, um, discarding all local changes. This is a quick one. Um, this is for the, the, the really bad days, right? Where we've, where we've programmed ourselves into a dead end and we know, oh, come on, let's, let's start over. Let's throw everything away. And th th that was a bad morning, maybe no coffee, I don't know. Um, and let's, let's really start at the beginning. Um, this is number four. And again, let's have a look at what we have. Again, a couple of changed files. Um, there's a couple of ways to skin this particular cat. You could use maybe, I don't know, do you have a favorite? Are you using git reset for these cases or git checkout or git reset? I'm using git checkout. Okay. So, so there okay. are uh, many ways to do it. Mm -hmm. You can git checkout, git reset with hard argument. Mm -hmm. You can, you can uh, use, you will use git restore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's my favorite. Okay. Yeah. You, you know already. <laughs> <laughs> So again, I'm using Git Restore again because I find it um, it's it's the most it's the clearest solution, right? There's no doubt what what's going to happen if I use Git Checkout or Git Reset. I have to remember what I'm doing with Git Restore. This is very clear. And this time, I'm using the the dot operator, which means everything in that directory and in in subdirectories is going to be restored. So let's do that. And Whoa. We can see this command does not ask you if you are sure or not. <laughs> so please be careful. Exactly, exactly. That's the one thing to keep in mind. So with these last couple of cases where we've been working on uncommitted local changes, you really have to be careful. As as Rafael said, um, you won't get those back. Maybe in your editor with command Z or there's a, a temporary- Do you uh, ask for confirmation in tower? Um, we do, we do, yeah. Okay, cool. So <laughs> we don't have want to have complaints. You have op you should you should open a pull request in Git and and uh, ask them to to add this confirmation as well yeah. in this yeah. case. Yeah, it can be really uh, destructive and and uh, yeah, yep. that's, a, that's a real biggy thing. Yeah. All right, fixing the last commit. I want to skip that because I think that almost everybody knows that we're in a good flow. So I would suggest we we go to could, six. Could, could you uh, go yeah. back to to uh, sure. uh, previous? Uh, okay. Nice avatar. Nice avatar. How old were you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, twenty fourteen and, and the, the the picture or twenty thirteen? No, I I think it was twenty twenty ten or something. Um, I still have. Lots more hair. That's that's what you get when you wait a little longer. And you have hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It switched <laughs> from here to here. That's, that's, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Oh and my god. Glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a different person. I don't know. Same name, but different person. <laughs> okay, you spotted that. Let's let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to number six: reverting a commit in the middle. So. The good news, let's start with the good news. Not everything is broken or bad in this situation. So um, we're only talking about C2. That's the bad apple in the middle. Everything that came before and after is fine. We don't want to change everything, but we want to undo that bad guy in the middle. And the way revert is working is, is pretty non-destructive, I would say. So revert does not go ahead and, and, and rip out C2 and throw it away. It does not do that. But instead, it creates new data that contains opposite changes, right? So Git is yep. clever enough yep. to see, OK. So it's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Git will add mm -hmm. a new commit that will reverse the changes from earlier commit. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, I think, a pretty elegant way to undo mistakes because Nothing is destroyed, right? Nothing yep. is, gets destroyed. Yeah. So let's look at that in practice so people can see what we talked about. And let's see what we have. Let's find 
a bad guy. This is number six. So let's pick maybe this one. Mm, I'll show you the um, change set for that one. So I changed about into about this project. So <laughs> nice it's, yeah, I think that that's, that was an important one. Um, so if we revert that, I expect the, the opposite changes, right? And to do that, I can simply copy the commit hash from here and on the command line, because I want to show you how to do it on the command line, git revert and the commit hash. That's, that's all there is to. We're getting an editor window. Why is that? Because as we just talked about with Raphael, we're getting a new commit, right? And anytime I get a new commit, I can provide a commit message. Let's, I would say we stay with this one, right? Let's yep, so, so don't mess mm -hmm. with the Git history. So yeah. Git revert does not change Git history. So yeah. it's a good part of it. Yeah. You are still able to see commit you have uh, reverted in the repository history. So uh, in uh, contrast, for example, to git amend, uh, command will uh, uh, command you have to execute uh, git amend will uh, change history. So mm -hmm. so you you should not do it after you push uh, changes to the remote. But uh, with uh, reverting git revert, you can do it anytime because it will not change the history. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And we're, we're going to talk about a lot about changing history in the, in the rest of the, the workshop. Yep. So, it's, so, so. It's very powerful, but also a little bit dangerous. Eh? Yeah. Yes. So <coughs> uh, um, I think it's worth to underline that uh, it will not revert the um, state of repository mm -hmm. to another state. It will only revert changes that you have made in, pre, in, in a specific commit. So if you want to revert a repository state, a whole repository state to another point in history, you should use another Git yeah. command. And I've, I'm sure you will mention it uh, in future in, yeah. this, in this webinar. Exactly. Nice preview on, on <laughs> one of the next cases. Yeah. But, but a very good point. I've never seen that. that. That's true. Revert is a little bit ambiguous from, from the naming side, right? That it's, it's very, very good to understand. We're not reverting the whole, the whole history, just a, a specific commit that I, ne I never thought about that. Thank you for, for yep, I, 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 I think mm -hmm. it's the best way to deal with uh, some changes in repository mm -hmm. just uh, don't rewrite your mm -hmm. git history mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion um, it is better to just commit changes on the top mm -hmm. of your head commit right now yeah. because uh, messing with git history can break a lot of things mm -hmm. yeah 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 so let's go with this one. We'll, we'll take the, the suggested um, commit message from Git. So I'll just save and close. That's, that's fine for me. And when we take another look at Tower, we will see what wow, there's a new commit. And this is the one that Git automatically created for us just a second ago. And no wonder we have opposite changes that bring back the old state, right? That's the magic of revert. Very non-destructive. You can use that um, in in almost any case. In any yeah, case, and you can st still see the previous uh, commit uh, in, in yeah. the story. Exactly. That's the one that we wanted to correct, and this is the one that corrects exactly. the mistakes. Yeah, wonderful. All right, get revert, and this is the one you you just teased, you just previewed. This is resetting an old revision. So, uh, Raphael just just uh, mentioned the the scenario. <laughs> If you not only want to undo one commit, but really have a series of commits that were bad, not the direction you wanted to take, and you want to go back to that original state, in, in this case, this one here, and let's say mm, delete the, the later ones, not technically not really correct, but let's, let's, let's take the lead for a second and see what we can do in this case. Um, this is number seven. And again, take a look at what we have. Mm. Let's say we want to return to this point in time and forget everything that came afterwards. So let's say these two uh, were, were not the right direction and I want to start over and get back to this state. Again, simply copy the commit hash of the 
revision I want to return to. And on the command line, this is a pretty simple one. Git reset dash dash hard and the commit hash. So um, as you mentioned before, Raphael, this is also dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so we said hard. You can also use that to undo uh, local changes, um, but in this case, we're returning to a very specific uh, revision. That's the two B five zero four B E E. So it's also a versatile tool, um, but in this case, we're uh, turning back time. So let's do that and see what happens. You saw it flicker for just a millisecond, and boom, the newer commits are gone. So we use dash dash hard. I, I guess we need to talk about what else there is there is out there, right? Um, yeah, I, I know that it is used to be a most common option uh, to reset with hard option, but but yeah. I think uh, there are other uh, ways to to do it uh, less dangerous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good description, right? So there's, to my knowledge, there's hard mixed uh, soft and keep and I for the love of God I cannot remember what soft and keep do I live a happy life with dash dash hard and dash dash mixed and I, I guess so will everybody else um, so we'll we'll see what mixed does I, I have that prepared here so it's the same scenario let's say we want to go back to this uh, revision here and forget the the two newer ones but this time with dash dash mixed the, the big difference is that these two commits that I'm going to lose in a second, right? I'm going to undo them. They have a change set, right? They have changes here, index HTML here and a couple of files here. And the big difference that mixed does is that we're going to keep those changes as local changes in the working copy. So if I reset, and in Tower, we, we call it keep changes. That's the same thing as you would do on the command line with dash dash mixed. We also return to this revision here, but we now have those changes that were contained in those commits as local changes. So uh, I did my homework and I know <laughs> what the soft uh, way I do. So uh, the mixed, uh, those changes are unstaged mm -hmm. uh, and and with soft uh, flag uh, those changes will be staged uh -huh. so so you you can uh, just commit them to the to the to mm -hmm. the repository to, to the branch you want to commit them so okay. it's only the, uh, this difference the staging the staging difference yeah. okay okay wonderful yeah i i, I always forget that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, number seven was reset dash dash hard or dash dash mixed. And I think we're jumping, yeah, to the ref log. Um, the ref log is, is quite a wonderful tool that not everybody knows. It's, I would, I always introduce it as, as Git's diary. So it's, it's where Git nicely protocols every, every movement of the head pointer and a movement uh, of the head, yeah. Our yeah. logs from Git. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so move, movement of the head pointer is when you reset, when you check out, when you commit, when you merge, when you rebase, when you cherry pick. So actually all of the more interesting actions are protocol there. And this of course makes it perfect for, for cases when things go wrong. Yeah, so, so head, in the branch the pointer to the current revision. Mm -hmm. Once you commit a new change, uh, Git creates a new revision and change the head pointer to this new revision. Mm -hmm. When you execute Git reset from a uh, previous slide, uh, you are moving the head pointer to a specific mm -hmm. revision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, and this rev log is a, as Tobias said, uh, is a diary. Uh, where we can see all operations we have made in our repository together with revisions uh, uh, with hashes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for for explaining. Head head is um, a, a very central concept, and and it's worth explaining that. So thanks for taking the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about what you can do with the help of the ref log. For example, this one. You remember in uh, case number seven, just a, a minute ago, we <laughs> happily deleted data, right? We, we went back to a couple of commits before. And 
sometimes life is not that easy. So you do that. We, we just did number two a couple of cases ago. And sometimes you notice it was a bad idea. And then the panic emoji can follow <laughs> because you think, oh, my God, I just destroyed valuable commits. Ever had that, Rafael? I don't remember. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure uh, this is a very nice uh, feature of Git. And, and uh, once I uh, will be in this situa situation, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I will use this method to, to solve my problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, everybody has this at some point, I think. You're, you're resetting something and you notice, oh, damn, I just I, I shouldn't have done that. And this is what, what the reflog can help with. Um, so let's produce a catastrophe, I would say. Um, we can just um, produce the same scenario from before. So we go back to this revision here. And by that, we're, we're losing those two newer commits. And let's also say we shouldn't do that. But let's go on. It's a, it's a live session, so why not? Um, we don't need to keep changes. And voila. So I'll give you a second to understand, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Lost commits. And this is where the, the reflog can, can come in nicely and help you. Git reflog is all it takes to open that journal. And the first thing you, you have to know is the reflog is sorted chronologically. So the, the most recent item is at the top. And, and if we take a close look, this one here says reset. So this is the action that we just did 20 seconds ago. So good news, the, the protocol, the journal is working. Uh, everything's there. And the other good news is if we want to um, return to the state before, that's also protocol. So we can just pick this revision here, the, 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 the revision hash from the state before. And I, I could either use git reset, that's totally possible, uh, I'm, I'm totally okay, but personally I prefer to create a new branch like you uh, uh, suggested before, uh, Raphael, and let's call that happy ending. And let's start that branch at that seemingly lost state, right? So let's do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a new branch, that's good news. Uh, it also contains the commits we just thought we lost we are in home yeah so, so uh, uh, this will change a history of our git repository mm -hmm. and uh, if you are doing it after you push a uh, previous history to the remote it will be harder so uh, first of all you shouldn't do it uh, and once you did it uh, i think you will need to communicate with your team and 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 tell your teammates that you have changed history and they should check out new version and so on so uh, we have git and we have slack so we can do it <laughs> <laughs> that's, good. That's, that's seriously the best explanation I've, I've heard from from somebody because in every workshop people ask okay so what can i do if i have pushed that already and then some people think about it and, and have complicated solutions, but communication in the end, you have to talk to your colleagues about that. There's, there's no way around that. You have to. So, so it's good to mention as well uh, in, in context of Git reset or uh, reflog. Uh, once you have pushed your commits to the remote, and after you execute git reset or reset or uh, change your history and push it to to the remote those discarded revisions are still in your remote repository mm -hmm. so you will not see those commit in branch history but you are able to check this revision so uh, uh, so if you have pushed some sensitive data to the remote and and uh, git re reset will not delete them mm. from the repository it's a very important thing because yeah. when it comes to security you shouldn't commit uh, any sensitive data like api keys or um, some credentials to your servers uh, and so Perhaps on no passwords you, mm. yeah yeah you should uh, use for example gitcrypt to encrypt your uh, sensitive data before you commit them to the repository mm. but if you did commit uh, uh, a sensitive data, Git reset, 
will not solve your problem. And and uh, mm, I'm talking about this because uh, my background uh, is uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and and security, and having sensitive data like database credentials in a version. Uh, version control is a common mistake and and it can be very dangerous so uh, as i told you i did my homework and i watched your uh, webinar with, with chris coyer mm -hmm. and uh, you were talking about uh, garbage collector in git mm -hmm. so uh, when you uh, do git reset some commits are I think the good word will be unlinked to mm -hmm. any uh, reference in your repository. Mm -hmm. uh, no head is pointing to, to those uh, revisions uh, uh, and no uh, uh, revision insert itself has uh, those commits as parents. So uh, git uh, gc were uh, clear those unused commits in 30 days and this is correct but uh, you have to be careful because uh, you don't know how a remote git uh, repository are working with a garbage collector so for example we have asked uh, i think it was two years ago uh, github about their practice and they told us they never run a git oh. a garbage collector so your sensitive data will be forever in your repository. <laughs> there are some other tools to uh, throw it away from your repository, but mm. uh, the git reset or uh, git reflock is not a way to do it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. be careful because uh, I know many people are thinking 30 days and uh, this will be deleted forever, yeah. but uh, once you committed, pushed those uh, revisions to, to GitHub and uh, everybody can uh, restore those changes mm -hmm. uh, forever. Mm -hmm. What actually is a good thing about version control, right? That, that things are really hard to get out of it. That's just what we want, actually. <laughs> so it's be version bad. control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything stays there. It's very sticky and very hard to get out. Yeah, yeah. Very good point, yeah. Um, I wanted to show you something in, in tower, actually, how you can undo things in tower. So let's, let's do the, the same scenario once more in, in tower here. So I can again, reset and again, don't have to keep changes. And a couple of versions ago, we implemented something that I find very cool, uh, command Z, like you would use in a text editor to undo a typo or something. So I'll just hit command Z and voila, I undid the last, the last action. This works for a merge that has gone berserk or you've pushed something too early or you've deleted a branch maybe, or you've deleted a file or you've hit reset too early, you don't have to know the command to use to undo, you can just hit command. Great functionality. So, yeah, so yeah. Uh, command uh, Y also work? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have to try that out. I think, I think there's a redo actually. Ah, so command, nice. command so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never used that, so yeah, I'll try. Yeah, it, it does work. <laughs> This is live. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's let's go to number twelve. Um, so most most teams, and I I don't know how, how it's how you're working at at Buddy Rafael, but but maybe that um, convention is in place in your team too that people should not commit directly to a long running branch like like master yep. or main. Is that the case for you too? Yep. It's okay. good practice okay. and we'll, okay. we'll yeah. practice as well. Yeah. yeah, so most teams have a rule like that to, to not directly commit to main or master or uh, other long running branch like develop. And yet, of course, we do because we forget and we have to clean up, right? And that's the that's case I want to show here. In this case, I should have created or the, 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 the branch, the correct branch is already there. I just committed on the wrong one and I have to move it over to the correct destination. Well, let's see how we can do that. We can repair that, of course, with git 
And let's see what we have. So at the moment, master is our current head branch, right? And the last commit says newsletter signup page. OK, but we have a feature newsletter branch. So I would bet a lot of money that this should have landed here. And let's clean up. Let's remove it from the master branch and move it to the feature newsletter um, feature branch. First thing is I have to move over to feature newsletter to that correct branch. And then I can simply pick that uh, commit and cherry pick it over to the correct location. I'll just say yes. And voila, here it is. So we've moved awesome. that over. So that's the first half of the solution. Now the, it, it's in the correct place. And the second half is master is, is dirty. It, sh it shouldn't be like this. So let's move back to master. And we've used reset by now a couple of times. So we're simply resetting to the state before. No, keep changes. Voila. Nice. Master is clean. Nobody knows that we ever made a mistake. Um, and uh, feature newsletter. Nice. Correct. I'm doing this in another way. You can oh, yeah, yeah, execute yeah, yeah. git reset with the soft or mixed flag mm -hmm. and, and then create a new branch and commit changes to this new branch. And, yeah. and this way you can uh, remove this head, uh, this new revision from master and, and commit it to another branch. That's elegant, so, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also a nice solution. Yeah. Like so many things in Git, you have 20 ways of doing things. That's actually that's actually a wonderful thing, right? You can you can pick your own solution and, and, and see what works best for you. Yeah. So uh, uh, you you are using branches. Uh, I have one set uh, stat uh, after some analysis. It turned out that only half people are using git branches no <laughs> oh. yes yes it's sad but i i, I think uh, uh, we can do another webinar about how <laughs> to use git branches and why you should use it oh that's a very 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 interesting statistic that is very interesting because it's it, sad it, it's a statistic hmm. in in a in a in, in my humble opinion i think branches are the one reason to use Git because they are so simple and so powerful and so cheap and so easy and so fast and not using them is, is really... So branches are, uh, in my opinion, greatest thing in, in Git. Absolutely, yeah. Totally agreed, 100%. <laughs> uh, this is the way to do uh, the, the thing we just did on the command line. So um, Git checkout to go to the feature branch, then Check cherry pick. pick it over, right? That's a, that's a new command. And then go back to, to master and, and clean it up. Uh, and uh, again, things go ugly when you are doing it after you push this comic to the master, exactly. to, to on the on the remote. Mm -hmm. So there are some nice features in GitHub and uh, other Git services you can use to protect yourself uh, uh, and your team from uh, committing to long running branches, as mm -hmm. Tobias said before. Mm -hmm. For example, protected branches. Mm -hmm. in, in this way, nobody will be able to commit. Uh, to the master branch without code review, for example. Mm -hmm. So, but it is another topic for another webinar as well, I think. But that's a very good point. I, I wasn't I wasn't thinking of that. So I'll just take a note for the next time. Um, protecting your branches um, is really a, a good way to make sure that that these things don't happen in the first place. I mean, you now know how to clean it up, but if you don't have to, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, for the last couple of cases, I think two or three, we're going to talk about interactive rebase. And this is, um, Raphael has said it a couple of times already, be careful when you use the tools we're showing you today. So interactive rebase is heavily rewriting your history. And this means one thing we've, we've said a couple of times, but let's say it one more time. Don't use it on uh, history you've already pushed, you've already shared with your colleagues on a remote. These tools here are all meant to be used on your on your own history, on your local history. So if you've worked on a, on a feature branch for some time, right? And before you wanna integrate that back into a team branch, that's when you can use these tools to clean up, to optimize, to, to beautify your, your history, to make it more readable. That's all of the use cases that you can use those tools for, not if it's already out there um, and your colleagues have based their work on, on that. That's when you get 
uh, threats and, 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 and problems in your friendship. So, yeah. I love the comparison you have on your slide, Swiss army knife. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, remember, do not manipulate a git history. It can hurt you and your teams uh, like a knife. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's explore one of those tools from the Swiss army knife, and that's um, editing an old commit message. Um, so we've briefly touched, or you talked about that, Raphael, a git commit amend. So amend would be helpful if we wanted to change the commit message or, or add commits or, or changes, sorry, for the very last commit. That's when you can use git commit amend. But anything further down the, the commit history is a case for interactive rebase. And since this is quite a simple uh, case, we can use it to illustrate how interactive rebase works in general, because the, the steps, the general steps in interactive rebase are always the same. So the first question that you have to ask yourself is, how far back in history do I need to go to manipulate that part of history? Then actually starting the interactive rebase with the, with the command that we're going to use in a second. And then we're getting an editor window. And I'll talk about the editor window uh, in a second when we see it in practice, but these are the, the general steps. Um, and I think we are at case number 13. I think we're having two or three interactive rebase cases. And uh, let's say, well, we wanna optimize this commit message here. We wanna change this commit message. So the first step in interactive rebase is always asking yourself, how far back do I need to go? And at least to the parent commit of the one you want to manipulate. So at least this one here. And I could either just copy the, the commit hash uh, for the command line or could just do a little bit of counting. So this is head, this is head minus one, minus two, minus three. So this is the starting point for our interactive rebase session. And if we start that, it rebase dash interactive head tilde three. We're seeing that editor window that I just mentioned. And two things are important and to, to keep in mind. First, the order of commits is reversed. So this this always tripped me off when I when I started <laughs> using interactive rebase. This is not correct, right? Improve headline for imprint should actually be the topmost because it's the most recent one. I never understood that. The so reason, the, yeah. The head comet is at, at the end of this file. Yes. So it is yes. because we are right now on the parent of the first commit. Mm -hmm. And after we save this document, you will say it, mm -hmm. uh, Git will execute all command, commands in, in the lines order. Mm -hmm. So from the top to the bottom. Exactly. And that's that's the reason why it appears reverse, right? For, for yep. Git, it's correct. It just tripped me off and I never understood. So if you should be confused when you open that command, don't worry, everything is okay. Nothing is broken. Your, your commits are still in the right order. Um, and the other thing to know is we, we do not make the actual change here, right? I do not change the commit message or... or, or the, Combine hashes. something, yeah, or change hashes. So, oh my God, no, we don't do that. Um, the only thing is, we 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 mark up the the line we want to change, and we said we want to change the commit message for the first one. So, I will type reword because reword. Take a look here, is the action keyword for editing the commit message. That's that's all we're going to do here, and just save and, and close this window. And now, finally, I get the actual <laughs> chance to change right. that commit message. Yeah. Um, Raphael, how should we change that commit message? <laughs> uh, what about how to optimize the good change? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very important one. I know that's we couldn't survive without that. So let's save and close. And this is. This is uh, finalizing or, or closing the interactive rebase session. And let's see what we did. Ooh, yes, we just changed the uh, commit message of an old commit. Raphael, do you want to repeat that you should not do that? For... <laughs> I will repeat it once again at the end of this webinar. Okay, okay. So, so what we can do with rebase, we can change uh, a command, uh, what we want to do 
uh, in uh, your example, we uh, change our commit message, but we can change also, uh, for example, we can add some changes to commit. Uh, mm -hmm. We can uh, change um, uh, um, order an order yeah. of your commits in your repository. Exactly. So uh, one thing uh, you should uh, look at right now, uh, Tobias has uh, changed uh, the commit message uh, in the third uh, mm -hmm. com uh, commit. So uh, let's look at uh, the head uh, commit right now and the second commit. Mm -hmm. The uh, date was changed as well, mm -hmm. and hashes changed mm -hmm. as well. So we have uh, uh, changed our history. Not only this one commit, but we have rewrite all history since this specific commit. Yeah, yeah, wonderful explanation because that's that's really what rewriting history is, right? You're changing from the one you you manipulated in in some way yep. up to the top. Everything is different. everything will be uh, it, it, it is changed. So so uh, we can see right now from your uh, tower, uh, but also uh, Git committer has changed as well. So uh, when we are changing history, every change since this uh, specific commit we have changed will be changed and assigned to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So keep in mind, use this for your personal, for your local <laughs> history, and then, then everything is good. These are these tools are really made for that use case to optimize and clean up your own history before you bring it back to a team branch but don't do it when you've already pushed things. You will uh, have short friendships in that case. All right. Um, can we do two more? I would say we, let's do this one. Let's let's take this one and, and end the webinar after that one. Uh, this is actually my favorite one. So I, I, I have to do this because it's so, uh, it's, it's very, very practical. So the case here is, we made a mistake and it, it doesn't matter what it is. We could have forgotten to add a change or we um, could have, um, we should have deleted something. We should have, we, we've made a typo or we should have added a file. It doesn't matter what it is. We had a problem uh, and the natural instinct of course, is to just commit the correction as a new commit. But the problem with that approach is this shouldn't be here, right? In an ideal world, this shouldn't be here. This is, this is, uh, um, has no semantic meaning, right? And if you continue to work like that, original commit and then a, a, a band aid, a, a correction commit, and then original band aid, original band aid, your commit history will be unreadable after a couple of weeks because nobody understands why is it, this commit even there? Shouldn't it be there? And that's the beauty of, of fix up. Fix up is also a tool in, in inside uh, interactive rebase. Fix up takes this correction commit, this band aid commit, applies it to the original, and then throws it away. So the commit history is beautiful as it should have been in the first place. Wonderful to to impress your colleagues. You're, you're never making mistakes. <laughs> All right, let's jump in into this one. The last one we're showing. And before you, Raphael, repeat that you shouldn't do this on pushed stuff. This is really important. Um, yeah, let's say let's say that this one here is not complete, right? We, we made a mistake. We forgot to add something. Let's also say that my my change here in error HTML fixes that problem, right? If you take another look. At the moment, error HTML is not a, a part of that commit, so adding that should should make the, the thing whole. So let's go, let's start. The first thing is to just make a almost a standard commit, almost get commit um, fix up. And we need to tell git what commit, what old commit we want to fix with this one. So this is the bad one, right? We wanna fix this one. So I'll copy the commit hash and insert it here. 
So the, the way to read this is with this new commit here, I want to fix this old commit. That's, that's the way I, I remember and I can read it. Boom. You might have expected fireworks, but it's it's too early. Not much has happened. It's just a commit, but something is happening, right? Fix up exclamation mark. Mm, something is cooking. First half. Second half, we're still in the land of interactive rebase. So we need to start the session here because that's the that's the, the one we want to manipulate, and, and it's the parent one. So head minus one, two, three, four. Get read base interactive head tilde four. And the second part of the secret sauce. This is here. This is auto squash. So the first part is committing using fixup. And the second part is using auto squash. Seems a little bit complex. I'm sorry about that. But the good news, the good news is I don't have to do anything in this window here. Everything has been done for me already. Just save it. Sorry? Just save it. Yeah, just save it and close it, actually. I want to explain what happened, what Git did for us. But actually, that's the, the short version. Raphael just said it. Save it and close it. Don't think about it. But Git did two things for us. First, it, uh, it marked up that ugly Band-Aid commit with fix up. Right? That's the action we want to do, fix up. And it resorted, it reordered the commit. So this actually, this is the latest one, our fix up commit. It should be at the bottom, right? It's the last commit. But fix up works by combining with the line above. And that's the broken one, right? We want to fix this line here. So we're placing this one here below and using fix up. So this is melted into the one above, and that's it. Save and close. So from, from my perspective, uh, I really, really like clean commit history, mm. uh, but I will not use this to fix and make it more clear once I push previous version to the remote. But, but, uh, but there are times when I would use it. Uh, for example, uh, in our repository, we have database migration scripts mm -hmm. and we are execute, executing those scripts in a commit history order. And once uh, our fix is in a wrong place in our history, uh, we can mess with our database. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, uh, we can broke our production environment, for example. So uh, there are some cases we have to change the history of the Git on the remote. And uh, this is the one case. But as we told with Tobias uh, before, uh, uh, you should uh, communicate this, those changes with your team uh, and those changes uh, uh, should not be common in your team. Absolutely, yeah. Wonderful, almost closing words. Keep that in mind. That's, <laughs> that's the one thing to take away, definitely. Um, <laughs> the other thing is that we have a, a special gift for you guys. So I know we're, we're talking to, to Raphael's audience, to, to the, the, the body community. So if you want to check out Tower and see if it helps you and, and, and make you more productive and help you undo the one or the other mistake, we have a little gift for you. We have a, a special 50% off with that code. You will also receive that via email. So or make a screenshot or, or uh, look at it in the recording and, and, and that's it for you. Raphael, closing words. It's it's your community. It's it's buddy people. I, I'll, I'll leave the closing words to you and then, then end the session. So so um, I love uh, the sentence you have on uh, the website about this webinar. So Git is uh, I, I will quote, quote it. Uh, Git is like an iceberg to the most of people. So they know the base uh, basic commands, but uh, miss out uh, the uh, on its really powers mm -hmm. so i totally agree with it we can execute uh, uh, we execute git pull git commit git push on daily basis uh, uh, but there are plenty of other useful commands that 
many developers even don't know about. Mm -hmm. from, my, from my perspective, it is good to know that those commands exist and you can do it. Uh, you don't have to remember all those tricks uh, we have uh, did mm -hmm. Uh, uh, today, but uh, it is good to remember about those uh, nice features, and uh, you, you you can just uh, Google them, or and and I I'm sure you will find a Git Tower website with some uh, uh, with some uh, tricks uh, how you can achieve it, uh, or you can share with our community. Uh, I don't know cheat sheets uh, mm -hmm. uh, with commands so we have uh, we were talking about today and and in this way they can have those commands uh, when they need it wonderful wonderful closing words nothing <laughs> to add from my side thank you so much and for don't for override git history <laughs> one more time <laughs> thank you so much rafael for being here and, and thank you everybody for joining us uh, today uh, have fun breaking things and, and also repairing stuff Take thanks care. goodbye thanks for this webinar and your time and your knowledge you have shared with us thank you have a nice day bye you too goodbye